Hi there, you are going to join me on a trip to my favorite Goodwill. The first thing I found was this bowl. I thought it was very pretty. I am using my husband's phone because we were running errands and I forgot my phone, so I'm using his. So I felt the colors were extremely bright on his phone. I don't know if the settings are different. And I'm also recording on his phone, so if the sound is a little different, it's because I'm on his phone. This is the clear glass section. They have a nice little um, section. They keep it kind of rotating. New items come in and go. And in this area, are I feel like they're more the day-to-day um, -day new things come in and they put them in this little section here. So I always look here first because new things are always in that area. I found this mug to be interesting. I thought it was interesting how the lady looks like the front of a uh, ship. And I feel that this is not a... Uh, mass produced piece. I feel that this is a studio art pottery piece. I could be wrong. So I thought it was different. And then this wooden box, I needed to see what was inside this wooden box. Had a little pyography design of the roses on it. And inside, drum roll, is it was nothing. <laughs> it was empty. It was very large box and I think that is why I decided against getting the box because it was very uh, large. And then a paint by numbers. I was excited to see a paint by numbers, but this one unfortunately did have damage to it right there. So I did leave that on the shelf, even though it had some age. I think it said 1954, if I read that correctly. I always have to remind myself to look at the top shelf because I, I kind of focus in on the second and the third shelf. And so you have to make sure you look on the top shelf. Here was a coffee pot or a chocolate pot, but it had a big crack down the side there by the handle. So I put that back on the shelf. And let's see if there's anything else. Oh, this was a souvenir box from Vancouver, British Columbia. And I did a bad job of showing you that wooden box. <laughs> Here was a sad-eyed puppy dog. I had seen a sad-eyed puppy dog in a couple videos back and I did not get it and quite a few of you told me oh you should have picked it up so I decided to get that sad-eyed puppy dog here was a little silk flower cactus arrangement uh, and then these were pretty those amber glasses and here was a, another trinket box a little blurry sorry about that oh and I'm not showing us that okay <laughs> and then this poodle has a lot of wear to the luster wear but I thought someone who has a poodle might like it even though it does have the paint worn off oh that's right I saw the poodle and I go back to that now I'm remembering I saw the poodle was distracted and then I went back to the wooden box all right <laughs> and decided to go with the poodle and then I'm checking to see if that nativity looks promising. I think it was resin and I didn't feel that was a goodbye. Here was uh, Oneida plate. I thought that was interesting, the shape of that kid's plate. And then those were bookends. Kind of be moving along fast here. I think I was on a short amount of time. Jimmy was going to go and get some dog food or something and I needed to make sure we were done at the same time. And then look, look at this. Here is a studio art paperweight and it is signed underneath that sticker. Based on my research, I believe it is a Roger Vines paperweight and it is signed 1994. It is signed just vines, and so I decided to put that in my cart. And then this next piece I did see on another trip after I recorded this video, and then the third time I saw it, it, it I didn't see it, it was gone. But this sticker is what really got my, you know, your heart strings. I was like, should I get it? But I, there was just something I did not get it, and then I saw it again another time, and I didn't get it, and then it's not there. So someone finally took it. It's just those little pieces, especially the grandma made it, and that makes me, you know, sentimental. <laughs> Here is a really pretty mug. There was only one of these. I like the big flower on it. This is an end cap here, and then in the black section and the silver section, I don't really find much in here, but I do look. You never know. Sometimes people change their minds and put things back. Here was a nun, but the sticker on the bottom told me that it was more contemporary. And then I found a giant bag 
for only seven dollars of all these cookie cutters there are so many cookie cutters in this bag you'll have to guess guess how many cookie cutters are in the bag and you'll see at the end of the video how many there are and i do take pictures of them how i will sell them because i kind of separated them into different themes this was a cute little candle holder i think it was home co that was sweet but because we're not around christmas time i tend to not really pick up things and then i think do i really need the giant bag of cookie cutters and yes yes i did i i brought those home not those that was stationary here's a trinket box it did not have a trinket inside it so i left the rooster trinket box on the shelf this was very heavy and large so that was going to stay on the shelf as well. This is, oh, this I thought was quilted, but then when I pulled it out, I realized it's one of those craft projects where you poke the fabric in the, the, the sections of the foam. So someone did a very nice job, and they actually have it as part of their Memorial Day display at the front of the store right now. I wasn't quite sure what to think about this little critter. I think it was marked on the back, but I decided to leave that there. This has been here for a while. It looks like it would hold tea bags. That's what it looks like to me. Um, but I left that as well. This was a white luster wear made in Japan dog. Uh, I was going to get this, but then it had a big chip on the front of his ear. So I did leave that there this is they were restocking the carts and at this goodwill you were allowed to look in the carts so i was looking through the books jenny really likes graphic novels and so i was seeing if there was any graphic novels that she would like to read but i didn't really find anything but these were cute there was actually some more in another area with those i'd seen some earlier here was a gettysburg souvenir piece and then there was this really cute little dog, this resin dog, and it came in a basket, and it was only $2.99, but I decided against that because of the size and the weight, but look what I found. I won. <laughs> I won. <laughs> and then this, uh, I had bought a Animal Crossing calendar, and it turns out on one block, they put a six and a nine, so there are some days that we can't put the date <laughs> which is kind of aggravating. This is where I got my name from, this book. Ann Rand wrote this book called Atlas Shrugged. I'm trying to find the uh, name so I could show you where my name comes from. Here we go. I knew I could find it somewhere. I have not read this book. Uh, I did meet a man one time who had a, uh, a car, a railroad car, that he named the Dagny Taggart. There it is because Dagny Taggart works for the railroad. So that is how I got my name, in case you were wondering, from that book. And now we're going to go to uh, one of the my favorite greenhouses that is local to Strasburg, and we're gonna get some plants to plant in the backyard, so let's go. During the pandemic two years ago, the greenhouses were the only things that stayed open that you could actually go to. And they were mostly run by Amish and Mennonite, the greenhouses. And um, it was a nice place to go that you could actually get out of your house to go see. And there was still 
open air and all the oxygen and the space um, outdoors so you didn't feel like you were on top of everybody and just the color you know things to brighten your brain <laughs> so i really um, enjoyed visiting this greenhouse during that time just to look around and see and take in everything uh, during that time where we all were kind of stuck in our homes so that is when i first started gardening uh, our backyard i was always too busy and then of course we all had plenty of time on our hands so that's when i first started gardening in our backyard and um, the first year, I think I, um, <laughs> I think we had like eight tomato plants. I had strawberry plants, and then of course flowers. So this is my third year gardening in our backyard, and I don't go as crazy as I did that first year. But I mean, please, that first year we were all doing crazy things. I was washing my bananas. I bought a ukulele <laughs> because I felt I really needed a ukulele to learn how to play. So this is my i really enjoy going to this greenhouse and finding some flowers to cheer up our backyard do you have another suet yeah. This is what I use to prop up the. Where's Barney? Hi, Barney. Use these to prop up the flowers a little bit. Like that. See, so I still need to rest on. Barney boy. Put on here. There. Give him a little support. There. They're just so heavy in the flowers. We're going to take a break from gardening to look at the things that I picked up on this last trip to Goodwill. Here is the paperweight. I decided to make a little video of it so you can see the signature and the iridescent uh, quality of the glass. I think it's a very nice piece. Thank you so much for all your kind comments on our last video that Jimmy and I did together. We always have a fun time when we make a video together. And of course, opening up the friend mail is just icing on the cake. If you haven't already done so and would like to subscribe to my channel, it is completely free and you can subscribe by pushing the subscribe button at the bottom of this video and then the bell notification button will alert you whenever I drop a new video. Here is all of the cookie cutters. Look how many there are. And as I said before, the pictures are how I'm going to sell them as lots. Some of them seem to be brand new and some of them have a little bit of wear to them. But I thought that was a great deal for just $7. And now we're gonna get back to gardening. Here are the petunias I got. I got all the same color because I think it looks really pretty when it's all the same color. In the past years I've, got, I've done different colors, but this year I went with just this one. In this flower bed over here, I have our tomato plants that I bought at the nursery. We are growing some plants by seed. The cucumbers are starting to come up, so I did put them in the same bed here temporarily just so they would have more room to grow. 
I'm going to see if I can train this vine to go over here on this shepherd's hook. This is where I have the hummingbird feeder, the hummingbirds. And then uh, we had these two junk drawers from an old dresser. And so because I'm not planting food for us to eat, I decided to put flowers in them. And these are a little top heavy with all the petals. So they have been propped up a little bit on the boxes that they came in here. I'm trying to give them, they are perky. They're not shriveled up. So I know that they have enough water. It's just their, their flower blooms are, are heavy. So we have those two raised flower beds that are actually drawers. So we'll see how that goes. I put in some nice dirt inside them. So I think that will work out nicely. Over here, I just have some potted flowers for under the porch. This Dusty Miller, I believe this is Dusty Miller. Um, I planted last year and it came back. And then these are my strawberry plants. I started out with eight strawberry plants three years ago and they do multiply as you can see. I do have some creeping Jenny that takes over from time to time. So uh, I only bought two creeping Jenny plants and it also, as you can see, multiplies as well. So I do have to come out here from time to time and weed and cut it back. We do have some strawberry plants that are starting to ripen and you can see up close there's lots of berries on there so once they finally are ripe we are going to have a lot of berries to eat which is always exciting and here I put some more of the petunias in this swan that I got for free at an auction it was part of somebody's auction lot and they didn't want it so I decided to take it home I hope you enjoyed our tour of the little garden it needs a lot of weeding but Finding the time and when it's not hot out is the key right now. I would be interested to know if you grow a garden yourself, if you have a big garden or a small garden, and what kind of things you like to grow. I think it'd be fun to share what we, what we grow because we all live in different parts of the country and the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see ya.